Okay, good morning once again. Uh, well, I get to uh, warm up the crowd today, so I'm going on first, the first speaker, and uh, I'm gonna be talking about <coughs> Google Apps Script. And to begin with, uh, uh, can you please uh, sh uh, show me your hands if you already know uh, something about Apps Script already used? Okay, just just a few people here. Okay, great. And what about JavaScript? Yeah, much better. Okay, so you, you it will be much easier for you to start with AppScript if you are already familiar with JavaScript. Okay, so <coughs> uh, can you see uh, the text box? Okay, so uh, AppScript is a uh, Google technology that was uh, uh, presented just a few years ago and here's a except from from the blog post where uh, which was actually presenting the, the technology and uh, here Google App Script is described like a something like a scripting layer for uh, Google spreadsheets something like if you if you uh, if you know about visual basic for applications a component in the Microsoft Office, maybe something like that, right? And uh, in the beginning, it was something like that. But uh, during the last uh, few years, uh, it was in quite active development. And uh, I want to show you what uh, what this uh, technology uh, is today. So. First, I'm, uh, I'm, I want to, to show kind of a retrospective to the history of the technology. Uh, in May 2009, it was introduced in the closed uh, trial, closed beta testing. Uh, just a few months afterwards, it was open to everybody. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, regarding the name uh, Google Apps, I suppose you know, uh, you all know that this is like a um, productivity suit from Google, <coughs> and uh, uh, the fact that the the, uh, the name Google Apps uh, like takes two or three words of the name of the technology suggests that this is actually part of the suit. So f uh, in the beginning, App Script was kind of just for Google Apps accounts. Uh, and uh, in August uh, 2009 was open for everybody. Now it's available for any Google, uh, Google account uh, owner. Okay, and uh, <coughs> and then the development went in one-year iterations. Every year, uh, in uh, on the uh, Google IO co conference, there was something uh, new intro introduced. So in 2010 May. Uh, Google Apps finally detached from spreadsheets and got its standalone running mode and uh, got some r uh, really cool features like triggers, which I'm going to sh uh, show you uh, later. And actually, on the <coughs> conference, on Google Air conference, there was a one session uh, completely devoted to <laughs> Google Apps Script. And one year later, in 2011, there uh, were also a few really cool features, uh, features introduced, like integration with sites and uh, access to like uh, Google Docs, and also conversations between formats, uh, as well as uh, like a uh, visiting UI builder. Before that, uh, user interface was only possible to build uh, using code, and this. Uh, um, in 2011, there were, were already, already two. <coughs> I'm sorry. But can you call it? <coughs> there were two sessions about Google Apps Script. Okay, and this year I think <coughs> uh, was the, the the most interesting technology uh, additions to uh, Google Apps Script uh, were introduced on Google I/O. There were three uh, very interesting talks. I. Uh, Suggest you to to see them if you're interested in, in this technology, and maybe you you want to do this after after my presentation because they're uh, more focused on a certain uh, aspects that I'm going to show just uh, just briefly. 
Okay, so <clears throat> how uh, does Google define up script today? Uh, this is uh, today is it's not just a scripting layer for uh, uh, Google spreadsheets. Um, it's a let's say cloud platform, cloud scripting pla platform, which is based on a, a, a standard ESMA script. Uh, so, which means that this is basically uh, JavaScript. Uh, 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 which lacks some obvious features like manipulating uh, the DOM uh, or some other uh, some other features uh, of JavaScript which are kind of uh, not needed because the the <coughs> uh, the technology runs in in, in the cloud and uh, the the whole development cycle uh, of the program. Uh, uh, written uh, in app script is now inside the browser and uh, <coughs> this is an example for you to see it's not really uh, anything different from JavaScript uh, there are two types of uh, app script which is a container bound uh, scripts this is those scripts that, that are attached to a Google spreadsheets or a Google sites for example there are just two possibilities or standalone scripts. Uh, those scripts are not attached to any other documents. It's just uh, uh, code uh, stored in a in your Google Drive, and uh, it it runs just by itself. Although it can, of course, access those uh, types of documents like uh, sites, uh, uh, spreadsheets, or docs. So uh, here we see like. Um, uh, the, the script uh, that that will run in both types of uh, of uh, uh, containers. Let's say uh, the first one is <coughs> says hello to to the world uh, through the uh, browser object, uh, which is available only in uh, when the script is attached to a spreadsheet. And uh, the second case is the uh, logger, the object that. Uh, kind of uh, replaces the console object in JavaScript so you can uh, write some custom messages to the console uh, with it so uh, in that way I'm using it to to make a small uh, example of uh, using AppScript with this hello world uh, program okay and the 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 fact that the, you can completely uh, develop uh, inside the browser is possible because uh, AppScript has this uh, great uh, development environment. This is this screenshot of a uh, editor of the AppScript. As you can see, this is this, it looks like a uh, like a usual ap application that you would use for developing JavaScript on a computer, but it runs inside the browser and, and it's like a. Mm, uh, all its features correspond to all other features that you will find in any other editor of Google uh, of any other Google document. Uh, well, you can see like uh, usual st stuff like menu bar with uh, which has some file operations. There, there is a, a, a panel on the left that uh, serves like a project management tool you can store all files of your project inside uh, like one container uh, it says that the <coughs> extension of the file is js but it doesn't mean anything uh, at the moment because you can actually access uh, app script directly th through drive api for example or in any other way except for editor but uh, it is there to to make the uh, to make the point that you, you, you can uh, have uh, files of different type there. For example, there are, well, just two types you can have there for now. And the other one is HTML. And I will show you later how you, uh, how you can use it to, uh, to kind of uh, make a user interface for your scripts. Okay, on the bottom there is a, uh, there is a panel of the debugger. Uh, well, <coughs> you can you can do all sorts of things that you uh, normally do with a debugger. Uh, you can s set breakpoints and then uh, expect variables uh, on the state of the uh, application. 
and then just move between between lines and uh, and see how the program is running. Okay, and other stuff uh, that you see here, I will explain a bit later during the presentation. So, <coughs> a few a few words about uh, the security model uh, of the app script. So, to begin with, you need a Google account. This is like a minimum requirement because <laughs> you will need to like. Uh, manage permissions and uh, uh, to store your scripts and the place you store them is uh, obviously uh, Google Drive. Uh, but what is important is that uh, your scripts may be uh, executed in two different ways. Uh, one way is that uh, the script is executed uh, on behalf of yourself, uh, your account, let's say. <coughs> Or the script can also be executed as the user running the script, as the uh, uh, account of the user that runs the script. So uh, in any way, script will run in a sort of a sandbox, which, <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> which is called as execution context. And uh, this is a secured environment uh, where the script can only access those services that you explicitly allow it to, to access. For example, if you use uh, uh, some, some service in, in, in your script uh, and uh, try to run it, the first thing you see is the, the dialogue asking you for permission to use a certain service. And uh, after, after you allow it to, to run, uh, uh, to use this service, you can actually run the script then, with the second, with the second run. So uh, what it does is that like uh, it uh, makes the the same uh, kind of uh, authentication flow as you uh, normally do with other uh, web applications, and uh, you can then control this uh, authorization given to your script through uh, uh, Google account settings. Uh, I have a link there, uh, which which lead you, lead you right to the pan where you see all the applications that you granted access to your data, and so uh, all the Google scripts uh, which you run are also there. Uh, another another option is that uh, uh, at at one point you you're gonna publish your script as a web service. And then you will have a choice to uh, to to not run the script from your account, but rather to run on the account of the user uh, who uses the, uh, your script. And uh, then uh, the user that will invoke your script the first time he sees the, the same type of uh, warning screen that will uh, ask uh, the user about permissions to access the services used in your script. And only when it uh, when the user uh, uh, allows to uh, to access those data, then the script proceeds to the to the execution. Uh, there are also uh, two cases that are that are special. Uh, the one of the ways you can uh, run scripts is by using formulas uh, in a, a Google spreadsheets. It's like a sort of a legacy way of running scripts uh, inherited from uh, technologies like Visual Basic for applications. So uh, in this case, you are not allowed to use any services that require authorizations be because uh, uh, like to, to run a function uh, from the formula, we basically just right inside a cell of the Google Spreadsheets equal name of the f uh, of your function in app script and the function executes. So <coughs> you cannot actually use uh, in, in this type of function uh, any, uh, any services that require authorization because this type of execution Requires uh, the script to to like to run only safe operations. So this this way of execution is uh, mostly used for some sort of calculations or fetching information. This uh, is a URL fetch service, for example. And uh, 
Another case is that when the script is attached to uh, a spreadsheet, for example, uh, it happens when you first create a spreadsheet and then go to a tools menu and uh, in a uh, script uh, section you, you choose create a script and then it attaches to the uh, spreadsheet. In this case, the script will have access to this uh, document uh, in which it was created. So by default, uh, all sharing permissions effective for this document will also be effective for your script. For example, if I have an uh, owner of, uh, of this document, of this spreadsheet, and I have a script there, the script will also uh, will have uh, access to this document. And if I set someone, an editor, to, to this spreadsheet, uh, this person can al also run <coughs> the script on behalf of his account and also have uh, permission by default. Well, it sounds a bit, uh, uh, well, strange maybe at, in the beginning, but but if you if you start using the technology, you will see that this is basically uh, the way to way to use it. Okay. <coughs> No, I was talking about the services. Services. What? What? What does it mean? Uh, services is uh, are the uh, like the, the device of accessing different uh, different technologies outside, uh, do different th stuff outside of uh, inside. I mean, of the app screen. So uh, <coughs> again, divide them on a, on a few groups, which I did here and. Uh, the first would be like two services which you would use to uh, manipulate data inside the script, uh, do different sorts of optimizations, like for example with cache service you, you, you will be able to store information uh, for small periods of time to not fetch it, <coughs> fetch it too, far, uh, too often, for example. Or with HTML service, you'll be able to create HTML output uh, for your scripts. Or, for example, with Mail app, you will be able to send out email messages from your script. <coughs> I will describe those a bit later when I go into uh, uh, talk about e e each of the of the services. Next group will be <coughs> Google App services, which is the way to access different parts of Google App Suite. And, <coughs> and, and in this category, there are very different type of turf services. For example, those which are like uh, quite obvious, like spreadsheet app or uh, context app or calendar <coughs> app or uh, document app, those are basically for accessing documents, calendars, and uh, etc. Uh, for example, docs list is uh, a bit a bit misleading, but what it is is a way to access your drive. That uh, basically saved his, uh, its uh, name from the from time where drive was uh, uh, was called docs list. And uh, some things uh, which are interesting here is, for example, domain management services, which are basically uh, API endpoints to control your uh, Google Apps domain. Uh, the things you can do there is, for example, create users, create groups, uh, like edit their data and stuff like this. A very interesting um, feature for uh, users, for administrators, Google Apps uh, suit. There are also services which are kind of uh, shortcuts for uh, for different different things like for example map service which it, what it is it's just a way to uh, access some uh, maps API services which you can uh, actually access using different methods inside the script for example you can just fetch uh, data from uh, from uh, from Google and then parse it and uh, process it but maps it's kind of a shortcut to this and uh, the same is with charts for example, uh, well, right now you can create, for example, a, a HTML output which will use JavaScript and which can also access charts library, chart, charts API, and create charts using it. 
But uh, back then, when th those services were introduced, there were no other possibility except for this. So <coughs> those are actually actually very interesting uh, things. And uh, for example, some uh, things here are pretty unique, like uh, Gmail app. It's a, it's a way to uh, access your Gmail inbox, and it works uh, well. <laughs> Uh, usually, if you if you would want to do something like this, yeah, I think y you would like go the the way of uh, IMAP or something like this, to, and then you would download messages and analyze them. <coughs> but uh, in app script, actually with Gmail app, you can uh, do that much more faster because Gmail app uh, gives you access to your inbox, and you can, for example, uh, analyze the contents of your inbox or process messages which uh, are in your inbox and there are many uh, interesting app scripts already that use this service. And uh, the, another interesting one would be a language app. Uh, I, I don't know if, uh, if you know that uh, the uh, translation API from Google was uh, deprecated for some time and then uh, reappeared again in a paid form. Uh, so basically, if you want to use uh, translation API, it's, uh, it's, it's not free anymore. Uh, but through AppScript, for example, you can use language apps uh, service to, to use, uh, to, to get the, all the translation services for free. So pretty unique feature here. Another group is, uh, <coughs> Google, Google API services that are not, not available uh, immediately. Uh, in order to use them, you need to create a project in a Google API console and uh, get you, yourself an API key. And then inside the editor, there's a, there's a place where you can paste your key and enable those services. And those are pretty interesting as well. For example, <coughs> uh, there's access to uh, uh, AdSense or Analytics Data BigQuery, which is the, the which is the API for processing enormous amounts of information, or uh, more down-to-earth services like Tasks API, so you can manage your tasks inside Gmail. I I don't know why it's actually here. I think it should be like in a previous section, but anyway, uh, though those are not enabled. Uh, immediately you, you need to uh, enable them manually. Uh, if like the all the services, well, well, if some service is not built inside AppScript, there is still a way to use it using uh, services that allow you to work with external APIs. And first of all, it's a URL fetch, which I already mentioned. What it does, it's like talks to uh, other services and loads information, and which then you can process and, uh, uh, for example, talk to an, some API and uh, uh, in that way access to to services which are not uh, built in into AppScript. Um, some uh, some other services I will I will uh, talk a bit uh, more in detail later. For example, GDBC services is very interesting, as well as uh, XML, for example, which which you can actually, for example, fetch uh, some. Pay well, a lot of people for some reason need that <laughs> when you can fetch page and parse the page and get some information out of it. For example, then process it and send, send somewhere else or store inside the uh, spreadsheet. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk a bit uh, about execution method, uh, methods of the script. There are uh, a few different ones. And uh, well, the first one is of course <coughs> running inside the editor. There's a, like a play button uh, which uh, allow you to just immediately run this, this script that you just wrote. Or there is a shortcut in a spreadsheet uh, tools menu where you can just run your scripts from there. Um, yeah, also you can run uh, your script as a, as a formula from the, from the cell. 
uh, and uh, but it's off, all, all, only for those scripts that are attached to the spreadsheets, not for standalone ones. Uh, there is also a type of execution which is called uh, container extensions. This is also uh, for only for scripts that are attached for uh, spreadsheets, for example, or sites. Uh, uh, how it works is, uh, for example, uh, in spreadsheets there is a way to actually add your custom menu in a spreadsheet and in this way make it like a tight integration with a user interface of a spreadsheet editor. Or uh, you can add a, a, a drawing or a, a picture in, in the spreadsheet and uh, attach an, a function from AppScript to it. So if a user clicks, for example, on, a, on an image of the button, it will it will run uh, some some function inside your app script. And uh, the similar function, uh, there's a similar function in the sites as well, because the, the sites, is, it's another ther service which has a integra deep, deeper integration with app script. But the most interesting is probably triggers. Triggers is some sort of uh, analog for cron, uh, where you can uh, set uh, tasks to be run at certain periods. For for example, time-driven uh, tasks will will run uh, obviously like uh, could run even uh, as often as f every five minutes or so, and you can of course customize them uh, as um, the same way as you can do it in uh, in Chrome, for example, in Chrome tab. And uh, well, this is a you know what the Chrome tab is, right? Okay. <coughs> so there are also some specific triggers for uh, spreadsheet integration. For example, you can run script, you can attach scripts to uh, certain events like opening the spreadsheet or editing the spreadsheet. And moreover, the uh, spreadsheet will uh, pass some event information to the script. <coughs> For example, uh, on edit events, uh, on edit event uh, passes uh, information about the range in which the uh, spreadsheet was edited, the information that was entered, uh, and so on. And uh, a very interesting one is uh, on form submit, which obviously happens when someone uh, submits the information uh, with using the form which is attached to a spreadsheet. Uh, for example, uh, if you if you are register, registering for uh, this <coughs> event uh, using Google Form, uh, th there was a, like a script behind it which uh, immediately sent the information you entered into the form to uh, the fast organizers. So right after you clicked OK, like send, uh, all organizers get an email from, from the app script saying that, OK, there is a new registration for the event. So that's, that's how we track the new registrations uh, in the beginning. Then we switched to uh, another technology, which, which was like uh, more suitable for <laughs> uh, uh, bigger events, because the, the number of re registrations uh, grew enormously. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, another another way of running scripts is publishing them as web apps. Uh, when you publish uh, event uh, with web app, you basically get uh, two functions, which is do get and do, do post correspondingly for uh, get uh, method and post method. And usually you're, you're using do get method to, to process uh, queries to your script. And what you do is you can either output a user interface that you've built yourself using AppScript or a HTML string or HTML output from a, a service, a special service, which kind of has all, all uh, capabilities for templating and uh, yeah, and stuff like this. And uh, uh, there is also a service called Content Service, which, is, which I will describe a bit later. Uh, these events uh, also can, can get some additional information from, from a user. For example, 
Um, you can pass uh, get parameters. Uh, you can add them to URL and you can get them uh, as a parameter to this do get or do post event. You can process them inside the script then. So I already mentioned that uh, you can create user interface with it. So there are several ways to do that. Uh, and first, uh, which was introduced uh, uh, the, the first in AppScript, is a sort of a GVT-based, uh, this Google Web Toolkit-based interface where you can basically uh, create user interface using uh, all the same paradigms that you used in Google Web Toolkit if you used it. So basically, it's just you know like uh, uh, continuing analogy with uh, Visual Basic for application. There was uh, like a visual editor where you can just drag and drop buttons and uh, fields and quickly build something, uh, some interface for your application, and then just attach some uh, functions to buttons, for example, and uh, make a pretty good looking program very fast. So this works in, in two ways. Uh, you can generate it in code. This is the way it was uh, made from the very beginning of the app script. Can you see the, the code? OK, so basically, you create a, like an instant with UI app service and then add some elements to it. In this example, I have a, I have a button and a vertical panel. It's like a mm, interface paradigm in a uh, GVT uh, that you create panels and then attach buttons to them. And then I just return this instant um, for a, a do get function and when the user basically opens the URL of my script what it what he sees is my <coughs> my form that I created. There are also uh, a way to do it uh, with a uh, with a special tool that is inside the Google Apps uh, editor. And this is like a GUI builder when you can like create interfaces uh, using visual editor. So you can drag and drop buttons and all the other elements and then just uh, save it with some name and uh, just load it into the <coughs> instance of UI app and return to uh, do get function and you will get the, the user interface and the output. Uh, another way to, 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 to do user interfaces is HTML service. And this is something new that was introduced uh, just this summer. Uh, and what it is, it's just a way to use HTML for your user interface without all, all this uh, GVT stuff. Because it's, um, well, it's it's made uh, to be very easy and uh, like light, but sometimes it, it gets very messy, especially when you uh, generate all user interface with the code, not with the uh, uh, GUI editor. So, and for many people who are coming with, uh, from a JavaScript background, uh, what you would expect uh, for AppScript, they already know HTML, so it's uh, kind of obvious to, for them to, like, to use this technology rather than something, uh, something else. So how it works is that something with my screen. So there is a, a template engine that looks kind of like this. And uh, if you have experience with PHP, maybe it kind of looks familiar to you. And uh, what it is, is just uh, using some JavaScript uh, code inside a template to, to, to populate it with some data. Uh, there are like usual syntax when you just insert the code using, uh, uh, using this uh, uh, question marks. And there is a short syntax like this, which is called scriptlets which is uh, just uh, output uh, which is just uh, output the value of, of some uh, variable into the code so inside the, the this uh, JavaScript that you program uh, well 
uh, when you create a user interface with the HTML service, what you do is just a, you d just create an HTML file inside Google Apps <laughs> Editor. You just edit it like a normal text file. And what you have there is like another environment of uh, like uh, you can add any JavaScript libraries there, for example, or write your own JavaScript code. And if you want, like, to access some functions that you have in Upscript from the instance of HTML service, you can use this uh, shortcut, which is uh, called Google Script Run. Basically, it's a just object uh, which. Uh, has all your functions of all, uh, which you have in your project, and you just uh, attach to it your, the name of your function. It it's, it's, uh, runs and then outputs something to uh, to uh, HTML service. For example, here's was a big example of how to use it. It's like a button inside a HTML file, right? And there is an inline on click event here which basically invokes this function in a few. And uh, there's also a few uh, uh, callbacks attached to it, which are JavaScript functions inside uh, this HTML file, which will run uh, correspondingly if the uh, output of this upscript function will be true or false. Also, it, it can <coughs> bypass an uh, object, uh, this object, this button, to one of these callbacks. So, for example, if you have some output from this function, uh, it will be first parameter to those callbacks function, and this user object will be the second. So you can basically get some data out of uh, up script, and then also pass the object, JavaScript object, uh, which you use to run this, uh, to yeah, run this function. Does it make any sense? <laughs> okay, we're going to have some uh, questions and answers uh, at the end, so. Uh, and the uh, last way to use uh, to, to make a user interface, it's not actually a user interface, but actually like a out, just the output of your script. And what it does is basically very similar to HTML service, except that you can output a raw text with a certain MIME type. And uh, what it is for? For example, you can make script that uh, scripts that basically just output for example, JSON or XML. So you can basically create your own APIs with App Script, right? Just get get some data with uh, uh, do get or do post, right? Then process it, and then output as a text in uh, in a few of uh, supported formats like JSON, XML, RSS, or Atom, or just plain text. So as here you, you can see it's, uh, it's a bit similar to HTML service. And uh, what it does here is just uh, gets some uh, information from user. It's basically uh, uh, two, uh, two dates. And then it gets all events from uh, calendar app between those two dates. And then uh, outputs as a JSON information okay <clears throat> before I, I'm gonna show you like real examples of uh, script usage uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about sto uh, data storage options that uh, in uh, app script and uh, well the first of, of all is uh, kind of obvious the spreadsheets because spreadsheets can store data and uh, in the beginning, scripts all, all only worked with spreadsheets, so you can basically uh, both get and store data inside a spreadsheet. There is a handy function for that called get, uh, get di data range, and what it does is basically gets all data that you have in a, in a spreadsheet. So sometimes you don't know what what kind of data you have there, but with this function, you just 
take all information which is uh, uh, in the in the certain worksheet, for example, and it is uh, it is uh, uh, then uh, processed like a normal array of, uh, of values. Uh, well, then, <coughs> after you process the information, you want to store it in a spreadsheet. Uh, this is uh, this is done in the same way. You can invoke spreadsheet uh, service, then get the active sheet sheet or open sheet by ID, which is this long string uh, in the URL of Google Doc when you open it, and then just select a range and insert a, a certain uh, array inside the spreadsheet. <coughs> When you write data to the spreadsheet, uh, that, that they are not written uh, instantly. They're like kind of optimized for a performance. So sometimes you you have written data, but you don't see it, uh, it in the spreadsheet. So there is a, a function con called flush. Basically, what it does is like flushes the the toilet of. Uh, Spreadsheet data, data pipe and data pipe, sorry, and yeah, and writes the data that you have already written and like uh, breaks the cycle of optimization inside spreadsheet. So sometimes it's it's pretty handy because you know you just wrote some data inside the spreadsheet, not there. Oh my god! Does someone have a Lenovo charger? I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, it'd just be quicker. Okay, there are properties inside uh, uh, Upscript. What it is is just a key value storage. Where you can just store strings. <coughs> oh, thanks. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a something that you would use for uh, settings. And this is not very big, it's just a maximum of uh, 500 kilobytes of uh, information and each record can only be as, as big as 9 kilobytes. Uh, the next one is script... Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it works. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so script DB is uh, also key value uh, uh, data storage, but you can store uh, very big objects inside of it. So basically it's like a, a NoSQL database. And uh, what you need to know about is that uh, one script has just only one uh, instance of this database, and it's always attached to this script. So, so for example, if someone will run your script, another person from another account, uh, this person will work with the same instance of database. So, so basically, you have like a central storage of data with with ScriptDB. This is uh, an example of uh, storing uh, object inside it. Uh, uh, ScriptDB. Also, you can query uh, ScriptDB and uh, like. Set certain parameters and uh, uh, get data. It works very well, very fast, and it's one of the new features that uh, was introduced just this summer. Another thing, <coughs> which is uh, um, worth noting, is GDBC service, uh, service, and what it does is allows you to uh, use uh, databases like uh, MySQL from AppScript. Uh, this is the example of opening the database. Uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, you, if you are like you have your uh, MySQL database behind the firewall, there is a way to configure it so you know from which uh, host the um, query is coming, because usually it's distributed among Google servers, so basically you don't know which one it's coming from, but. There are documentation on the uh, uh, Google Apps website uh, with which you can like uh, configure this uh, exchange securely. And uh, the very brand new, sorry, <laughs> very brand new feature is a, <coughs> a cloud SQL. It's a uh, Google-hosted uh, SQL d database 
which was just uh, like uh, last <coughs> Thursday it was released to the public be be <coughs> before that <coughs> it was just available to uh, to a beta t testers but now it's available to e everyone there is a like trial account there which is uh, which supports the instant up to 500 megabytes so this should be enough for the projects uh, of uh, upscript level I mean <coughs> because there are there are some limitations on upscript which I'm gonna talk a bit later which uh, will uh, limit kind of a usage of it anyway but uh, cloud SQL I think will 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 make a like, great storage for bigger needs than uh, script DB, for example, can provide. <coughs> okay, so let's say you uh, you made some script, wanna then release it somewhere. How you can do that? How you can share it? There is a few ways. There is a script library, which uh, sort of like a uh, special place where everyone uh, publishes their scripts. It's available through. Uh, uh, Google Spreadsheets or uh, Google, uh, Google Apps Script uh, Editor. Uh, then <coughs> you can publish your uh, applications as a web applications, and then you will just have a URL that you can share to uh, other people, and <coughs> they can use the application. Or there's a, a new feature that allows you uh, uh, publish to Chrome Web Store automatically, so you have your application uh, like a shared like a web app, and a, a, anyone can. Well, you don't need to like deal with uh, uh, with all these uh, description files and upload uh, like uh, a Chrome extension yourself to the web store just like one button inside a Google Apps Script editor and your script is published into the web store which is very handy and uh, what it publishes basically it's a just not just the actual version of the script because you can just change something it will break and in, uh, in all people that like already installed the app it publishes the, <coughs> the version of your script it's, uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> basically like create a snapshot of your code and you publish it and then just you can create another snapshot and then like replace the one you, you just published with a new version which is also handy for, for uh, updating your applications which you already published and uh, you can also uh, publish your code as a library so you get like a, a, a long string uh, which you can share and anyone can just add the string to Google Apps Editor and use some functions that you wrote in, in their code like like basically like another service of AppScript. So this is basically very handy for like reusing your code for example if, you, if you're using uh, certain things uh, a lot in different scripts that uh, it makes sense to like write a library to work with for example with the servers that you uh, often use and then want to want to uh, exit from different uh, scripts <coughs> okay so <coughs> I think that since uh, 2009 uh, Google Apps Script ma uh, made a like a very long way and uh, now is, is a very ma ma mature technology with, which you can basically use uh, in many cases in instead uh, uh, like a uh, I know, lamp stack for example uh, as for me for example I, I, w I, w I was using um, app script lately in, in, uh, in those situations where I usually usually just wrote uh, like a PHP script hosted uh, like which uh, stored data in MySQL and was an Apache server. So now I just don't need it. Just uh, using this free technology to like to have uh, some script running uh, <coughs> uh, on certain time periods with uh, with the triggers and storing information script DB for example, or with a uh, GDBC servers to uh, have SQL storage. 
So I think that, uh, like in those uh, uh, Spike Jonze uh, commercial for IKEA, the the old the new lab is even better, like the than the the old lab. So you shouldn't be sorry about that. <coughs> Okay, so there are a few resources that sh that are not just you know the standard <coughs> things. I really recommend you to check out if you're interested. First of all, documentation for AppScript uh, in a normal like a uh, usual place where you would expect it to to find and developers that Google like com website. Uh, I should warn you that sometimes there are huge like uh, some mistakes in documentation and they're leading you in the wrong direction. But if you just uh, Google uh, the, the things you want to, to, to do, uh, you will you will I, I think you will find a solution because the community support is really great for, for Upscript. Uh, Upscript is an active development, and uh, like every uh, month there are fewer uh, releases, uh, some bug fixes. So if you, if you are want to follow this, there is a special place to go and uh, check this out. Uh, called release notes, and uh, of course, if you are actively using AppScript for development, you will uh, find a lot of a lot of small um, bugs, because you know most of the most of the services in AppScript are with experimental tag. So sometimes you're uh, f uh, you're like looking at things and. Uh, uh, well, you understand that they they don't work the way they're supposed to work. So, in this case, uh, uh, I suggest you to uh, to pose those issues on the issue tracker. And uh, the uh, team behind AppScript is very active, and they are actually following up on, on, on many of these issues, and they help you to to go further. And there's a guy in the uh, AppScript team which I especially recommend you to, to check out, uh, called Eric Coleda. And he like monitors uh, all the activity from from people around the world who, who are using AppScript, and he like repo reposting uh, the most interesting solutions in his uh, Plus stream. So if you subscribe uh, to his stream, you will be like uh, you will know everything which is going on uh, with uh, AppScript technology, and they also have like. Uh, uh, office hours every now and then, like every two weeks or so. So, <coughs> uh, I will show you a bit, a few scripts because I was too fast with the presentation and skipped them. But, ah, how to? Okay. Okay, so uh, <coughs> here's, uh, for example, uh, as a script here, which is, uh, can you see the code? Uh, what it does, it just gets the page out of developers that Google the Comap script release notes, the, the release notes page, which I just show you, and uh, parses it and uh, gets the uh, uh, release information and then outputs with content service to uh, RSS feed. So basically, this is this uh, line, a bit long line of code is everything you need to like to get your inf text information and like uh, give it away as a RSS script. There is a HTML service behind this script, and what it does, it's basically I just using a HTML service uh, for uh, its template uh, features. So I have a, like a skeleton of the uh, RSS feed, and I'm just inserting with a script like, some information in certain places that I need to, like the title of the item, link, description, and so on. So uh, here's uh, an example of the uh, application written with uh, uh, native UI here called Form Emailer. And as you can see, it's like extends the interface of uh, Google Spreadsheets. So when you go like at this, to the custom menu that it creates uh, during the installation, this this is uh, a script that you can find in the uh, uh, in the gallery. Oh, it's it's very slow for you. For some reason, there is a script gallery in Tools menu, and you can find this script there. And for example, if I go to the settings. 
so <clears throat> a new window is opened and inside of it is the custom interface built with the that uh, GWT approach that uh, I described in the very beginning okay it's uh, it's always like this when you're showing something and the internet is slow. <coughs> okay, let's leave it there and skip to another one. So here's a, an example of the script that talks to an uh, external service, service and this is just posting a tweet to Twitter. So this is a OAuth OAU configuration. I have a cons consumer and cus customer, uh, I mean consumer key and uh, secret. And then I just use URL fetch to post this information to an uh, API endpoint of Twitter. Uh, this is a, a script that uh, demos uh, uh, like a web app uh, execution type of app script. And what it does, it basically gets the information out of analytics API service and displays it using charts API inside the Google sites. So as you can see, you can you can do some rich uh, interface use, using those technologies. And from what I see, I, th I think they're using some some additional library, JavaScript libraries like uh, jQuery UI or something. Uh, okay. Oh, this is uh, this is another interesting example. This <coughs> this one I already showed uh, uh, on. Uh, uh, GDG group uh, last time and uh, what it does it just uh, gets the data out of uh, a city bike uh, data di data feed with uh, uh, city bike station information and post them to uh, maps data API and uh, the result is this beautiful map at uh, Google Maps service and it's updated every <coughs> every few minutes okay and uh, yeah the last example I want to show you is the is another web app which basically was a, a judging <coughs> tool for Google photography prize and uh, here you can see there are entries with some photographs and uh, you can leave notes and uh, leave uh, marks and uh, like uh, re uh, review all all the entries that you receive in in, th in this competition, and there are like lots of them, uh, a lot of pages here, and uh, you're basically saving this into the spreadsheet, and then it's uh, it's processed by uh, other people. So uh, well, I think this is it. I uh, already already over time but if there are any questions I would love to answer them anyone <coughs> yes uh, yes uh, my question is um, is there any possibility to do something uh, asynchronously like um, get some progress updates on, on calculations or something like that in yeah, basically the all operations are asynchronous inside the app script. Uh, actually, the problem uh, sometimes to do something synchronously, and I didn't mention there is a, so for example, for some operations there are cases when uh, there are several instances of the same script which are working with the same data, so there might be some collision. So there is a service called uh, lock, which can basically uh, lock some things while one instance is running so you can basically uh, have the data in, a, in, in the same state so as, asynchronous is not, not a problem but sometimes uh, the synchronous run is the problem okay. more? yeah sure uh, I have a question about the performance uh -huh. Let's say it's well known that the vast majority of end users, which from this perspective are our kind of prospective customers, they still use the Internet Explorer. And mm -hmm. so this, all this object has to be instantiated on the client side. It's like that 
that into the storage, database storage, and database connections. There's the question about the performance. How, how well is performance? Uh -huh. <coughs> so everything about uh, AppScript is, is run, uh, is, is not run on the client side. Everything is server side. So nothing is loaded except if this is a uh, content service or HTML service. Then there, there, is a <coughs> there could be a portion of data which is computed on a client machine. But usually everything is run on the server side. Uh, and uh, um, about the performance, well, for those type of uh, tasks uh, for which AppScript it is designed, it has a it's good performance. Uh, for for but it's of course it's not uh, something like uh, of high demand so you shouldn't expect to have like something really 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 fast working uh, with AppScript but normally everything everything works uh, as well as uh, well you would uh, have uh, working for example using uh, like a standard uh, shared hosting uh, account with uh, with like some PHP script, scripts running on it. So, uh, except that uh, if you use an app script, of course, your code is hosted on Google servers, which I think a bit more reliable than most of the shared uh, uh, hosting services. So, thank you, Sergey.